Christmas season, and this is a big day. Uh, great night yesterday. Just so want to give a thank, big shout out to all the ones that helped with the Christmas uh, float in the, in the parade last night. Just a lot of good time. What? How many still here? Me, me, Lord, Lord. Yeah, I know. We we heard a couple songs all the time uh, on Main Street, so it's a great time. Uh, we had, I believe, the last count I had was around 55 that were on our float. We're in the truck pulling the float, or on the side beside behind the float. So we had on the on the trailer there was around 38 kids, and we had 10 people walking, giving out candy and stuff. So great night last night. Uh, our our church came in second in the uh, overall floats of the theme. So good job. Just want to say thanks again. Um, who are you looking for? Oh, you go to the back there. Yeah, it's like the kids from last night. Got them all squeezed in. But uh, I want to say again thanks to all the workers uh, putting it together. And so it's a good night. Hey, let me give you a, for tonight. Tonight at 6 o'clock is the Christmas program with a lot of the kids in the program. You want to be here and get here on time so that you can get a good spot. Um, that program, I forgot to ask Emma, you know, how, how long is that? I don't even know how long the program is. It seems like it'll be, for the ones that are leading, it seems like two hours. How long is it going to be? Is it 45 minutes? Do y'all know? Jennifer, have you, what's? 30 to 45 minutes, okay. So that's from 6 to whenever they're done. Then we will move over into the fellowship hall for the silent auction and the snacks and the uh, uh, other stuff that you'll bring. It's imperative Church family, listen to me very carefully. Very imperative that you bring some food to um, for us to snack on. The kids, uh, there's, I don't know, 30 or whatever, so 40 kids in it. They'll need something to eat. Um, 
the uh, some of the families coming. Uh, some of them don't come on Sundays. So this may be our, our time to really connect with them. So if we have enough food, they'll sit and eat. You'll be able to talk to them and uh, just visit with them and tell them, talk, talk about their kids and everything else. So that's right after we get through in here, we'll go in there and have our snacks, uh, our food, sandwiches, you know, that kind of stuff, candies, whatever you want to make, bring. But we need to have enough. So uh, church family, you're sitting here. The parents of these kids aren't going to hear this announcement. So it's up to you to bring enough food for twice the amount of people that are here in this building right now. So there's a lot of kids, so we really need you to bring some stuff tonight. So work on that. Doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, just something for them to eat, and that will be really good. Then the, you all know about the sun auction. I'll let Sharon give you an announcement on that in just a second. And then after that, I think we have one from the personnel committee, and then we'll be ready to start singing. But I just want to say again, thanks again for your help in this Christmas season. It's already been a great time. We, we, we have our Advent candles lit from the last couple of weeks. Uh, we look for the coming of the King. It's kind of our theme, looking for who's the King uh, for us. And uh, I, I just was glad to see um, that the float, our float that's in the Christmas parades, year in and year out, always want to focus on the, on the uh, nativity, the advent of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. We may have all sorts of themes that the, the city does or whatever, and we may be able to make that work, but the bottom line is, when you see our, our our church going down through there, we need to have our name on there. But I hope that everybody knows First Baptist Church, when it comes to Christmas, we're going to focus on Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus. And that's important for us, okay? So uh, keep that up. When you go down Main Street, you'll see right now this year, the theme on Main Street is uh, snowmen, Okay. If we had thought about this closer, we would have tried to do a nativity with snowmen. So we didn't get to do that. But you will see down here, uh, right by City Hall, in that corner where the building was torn down recently, uh, you'll see that's that's our, that's your, the church's nativity that we put out. So wherever we get put on Main Street, you'll see a nativity from our church. We want to focus. I don't mind people celebrating uh um, Grinch and all those other things but our church together that's our primary responsibility to be a witness to God's word in our Amen. community Amen. so thank you all remind me next year because I will forget remind me next year the one thing we need to do is we had 38 kids on that trailer and they looked up at me as, I, as we were passing out the bags to give away to the people on the street, those two or three or four, or I think it's all 38 eventually, I said, do we get any candy? <laughs> oh, you know, checklist, checklist, checklist. And we've not done it before. We gave them peanut butter sandwiches this year. That's something new. We did that before they go, do we get So next year, someone help me with this, and you take on your responsibility. Get them a bag full of candy of some sort that we can give to them when they get off from the float here at the church. So that way they all get a bag to take home. And all the parents are saying, please, no. But <laughs> you didn't have to look at those little boys and girls. And they said, don't we get any candy? <laughs> and these poor children never get candy. <laughs> How hard to break it. So we gave, we gave them some candy from the, from the bags. And so if you didn't get any on the, on the streets, it's because we gave them some of your kids. I'm talking way too much. Can I say something real quick? Yes, sir. That was absolutely awesome to be a part of everything with everybody that worked on that float together. It was awesome. It was so amazing to see the people of the town and see their faces when they saw us come down and the kids are growing up. Okay. Has anybody already stepped back into the fellowship hall and seen the side of the, the t we don't have as many tables up as normal yet because they're in the Sunday school room, so we have many more tables. But it's already full. And there's a lot of yeast rolls and cornbread stuff and pies and 
cons and other gifts, it's great. So if you're going to bring something, we're going to set up more tables, bring it. But be sure you bring food for us to eat. It's not a Baptist fellowship without food, people. Amen. <laughs> We've got to have finger food. It doesn't have to be, it's not a potluck. It's finger food. Something easy, just bring it, please. But our main goal of that option over there is for you to give to international missions to help our missionaries around the world tell others about Jesus. Amen. Hopefully your Sunday school room, some of you have already got the week of prayer program. Every day for a week, it's got something about what our missionaries do overseas and gives a prayer request for each one. Please take it, read it, pray for our missionaries. They need your prayers. They need our money, but they especially need our prayers. Come with what God has already told you to give to Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Whether you bid on something, win the bid, give what God has told you to give to the mission offering. If you won some bids but it didn't come to the total that God gave you, just make out that check or put the cash in for that total amount that God told you to give. If you didn't win a bid, you didn't win anything, give what God told you to give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Make your check out in the memo, put Lottie Moon Christmas offering or international missions on your envelope. Put it there so our money counters know where that's designated and where it's supposed to go. We will have envelopes out there tonight. If you don't, start coming tonight and you want one, they're back on the table back in the foyer. Okay? They look like that. Program looks like that. Get you one, please. Hey. Okay. I know everybody has had to dive in their pockets a little bit more than usual this time of year, but this is really special, and I think it's one of the most important is our offering for our staff. Pastor, Rusty, Connor, and Tracy. They divide it up equally, which... <laughs> I look at my pastor and go, that he, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. And so it's going to be divided between four people. So I uh, just ask you to be generous in giving for our wonderful staff. They do so much for this body. Um, if it's a check, make sure you write on the check what it is for. And if it's cash, make sure you put it in an envelope and mark on the envelope what it's for. Okay? Let's give generously. Thank you. All right, we're ready to praise the Lord. Yeah! Uh, yeah, there's some excitement. <laughs> Great to be in his house today. Yeah. You know, if you feel like I do, I don't think I can think of anything I'd rather be doing than worshiping the Lord today in this place. So, Y'all stand and let's do it together. Oh, come swing for the restless way. Send the 
testimony had a procedure done on Friday and already up here ushering today. So he's in good shape. God is good in him.
salvation that you offer each one of us and the peace the love the joy that we have in our heart as a result of that salvation salvation father i pray for, for everybody in this place that they know you that they feel the pull to come to you to, to want to know you to want to have that relationship with you i know what brother paul's words today in the name of Jesus Christ, that people would come to you, Lord, that people would feel your Holy Spirit in this place. And we will give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
This is a first for me. together and celebrate those stories they never are old now they may be a little uh, froze up when we first start in uh, late November early December but there's something about opening up the scripture opening up those songs in our hearts 
and just say, God, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you found yourself there at the very end and said, well, can I just jump in with, with the group and start singing that? You know, that's, that's what I like to do. And, and so uh, that's what Christmas is about. And, yes. I bought some of these. Uh, we don't want to have to be putting you out. You know? I, I, I need to get those uh, those uh, shirts down at Sharps that are for uh, uh, what do you call them? At least we know how to use fire extinguisher. Yeah, yes, and we've got training. The bad thing is we still don't have a fire extinguisher in this building right here. Uh, that's on our list when we get uh, next time they come through to get one up in here. Well, we know you're on fire for the Lord. But well, you don't need me to catch on. I, I agree. So, so we're. Uh, let me get over. I'm supposed to be on this side anyway. Uh, so when we uh, we've been thinking about uh, looking for a king, and we're looking at John. By the way, if you were not with us last week, John chapter one. Uh, today we're looking at verses four through uh, ten. Uh, next week uh, we're going to be looking at verses eleven through uh, thirteen, I believe. And uh, Ronnie Payne is our director of missions. He's going to be with us uh, preaching next Sunday. Uh, he's going to be on that topic. Uh, Trace and I are are going to uh, do a wedding renewal for uh, dear friends, uh, couples uh, that uh, were in our church in New Orleans. And they asked us about a year ago to come and do their 25th year anniversary renewal. And uh, so excited. This uh, couple, important in my life, uh, TJ, uh, the husband, Talmadge, uh, he was my, uh, he told me, he came to me, he said, because I just moved to New Orleans and he said, Brother Paul, I want to be your ambassador to the uh, to the African American, to the black people, uh, because he was. And so we would do a lot of things together, and um, he helped me to connect with uh, different people, go in different spots. And so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, TJ and Nell Nora next week. So we won't be here next Sunday. So you need to be here, and you need to keep on with this study. And we'll celebrate two weeks from today, Christmas Eve, uh, at 10 o'clock, by having our uh, service together, candlelighting service, as well as the time with the children telling the story. And I'm just so glad that, uh, Trevor, you uh, uh, took that step and uh, sang along with Kelsey. It's always good to sing along with someone that can sing. Uh, so that's what I do Amen. with right. my wife. So you keep on. And so uh, good, good, uh, good things for us, good words. I, I think I just, uh, as y'all were singing, song, I know why we didn't win yesterday. Because I can't sing. <laughs> no, but you drove. You yeah. drove us. Uh, no. Remember you said we need to put some hay on top? We forgot to put hay around the manger on the top. That's probably the reason why we didn't come in the first place. We forgot. We had hay on the in the on the trailer. We had bales of hay, but maybe that's the reason why. Uh, it's all those little things in the story. I feel like the kids were as sad as the whole time. The kids, yeah. We, we, we did. We, we did. We had. We did. I'm just a little competitive, and it's with with one of my with the president of the Sterling Alliance. Too. We worked hard. We had a great time. But but you know the big thing is last week we talked about how that Jesus is. Um, we looked at the Word, so in eternity, and looking at the Word that's we know is Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, the second part of the of the Trinity, and so today we're going to look a little bit more into that. It's it's building to what we'll look at. Um, um, in two weeks, but today we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about the Word and how the Word is both um, life and light. So last week we were thinking about the kings, so we have the purple. This week we're going to focus on uh, the, the uh, you know, in Advent circles and do this, you'll have purple and you'll have a pink and you'll have the white for the Christ being born. Um, but uh, today, think about gold, kind of reminds us of the light. And the value, the weight, the glory of God. And so we're thinking about that today as we think about the glory of God um, coming into our life and, and into our world. And so good song. Both those are great songs. Uh, all of them were good songs. I love it. Um, maybe we have to have a theme day of forevermore because there's that other song that we sing in praise songs that, that Brother Gary leads us to do, the forevermore. And then we have the forevermore in that song that... Uh, the second of our of our hymns. So when we think about the forevermore coming to be with us, so temporal in nature, us as as uh, earthlings, as humans. And so uh, look with me in John chapter one. Next week, by the way, will be the green candle talking about um, uh, God coming to bring us uh, potential for for salvation. 
So John chapter 1, uh, and in this story here, we're focused on Jesus, on the Word, and that the Word is God, and we see that. But we're going to pick up now in verse 4, and we're going to read through verse 10. So just look at your scriptures and follow me with that, and then we'll, we'll talk about them for a few minutes before we have that opportunity for you to make room in your heart. I just love that song. That's just captivating to me. Um, what, what is so filling your heart that you don't have room for God to be in that room? And it's not just a dedicated room where only God lives, but you have rooms that you occupy and live, right? Next week, in this next week, just go through some of those rooms that you enter into and think about them. Now, you may have a dedicated room where you would go, and we may think about this as being the dedicated room where we come to worship God as a people. But in your house, there is a room that you go to eat, and there is a refrigerator. If you want to call that, that's the room of all, that's the holy room in your thing for kids and everybody else. What's in that refrigerator? And so you go into that room in the kitchen. You know, that's where food's going to be made or prepared or fixed. And, and so you like that. But that room should be emptied out enough where you can have God in that room. Because if your refrigerator is empty, if your, if your uh, uh, cupboards are bare, if, if behind where you have your favorite foods, if you pull it open and say, where are my comfort foods? And they're empty. You'll be saying, you'll be saying, Mama, if you're a kid, Mama, we're all out of them. How are we going to make it through today? Because we are going to have this in the room. And we know that. And so there is those places where it's empty, but there is someone you're going to call to to fill that spot. And if it's not your mom or your dad or someone else like that, we should always know it's God that ultimately fills those cupboards. It's God that gives you the breath to live this life. It's God that we want to trust. And so think about the rooms you go into this next week. Think about what God's provided for you and let God give you his presence and his word. So let's read John chapter 1, verse 4. Life was in him. Who is the him? That's Jesus. Okay. Life was in him, and that life was the light of men. We think about these candles to remind us of that. And the light, that light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man named John. Oh, wait. We're changing people here. How did John get into this story about Jesus? Well, let's read it. There was a man named John who was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify about that light, about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. Verse 9 switches back. The true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, yet the world did not recognize him. So as we think about today, we're focusing on Jesus coming into our world. A world that was full of darkness. The other day I was driving and I heard a, a preacher talk about it. He, he gave a witness, a story about four different women. Uh, and, he, and every one of them, their stories, they were made up stories, but they were based on his, his pastoral experiences in life. And every one of them, by the time he got through, you're going like, man, how are they living today? At the end of everyone, and, and how are they making it through their life today? And I thought about that, and I thought about this, and that, that's where we all are. Apart from Jesus coming into our world, we would be in the darkest of places in this world. We needed God to come into and live among and exist as a human being. He needed to come into our world to light up, to bring light. He was the creator. He created everything. We saw that last week. God, uh, the Son, was part of the creation. He was the creator. He was eternal in nature. He made everything. And everything got messed up when we took over. We sinned, and we know that. And so without God in our life and in our world, it is total chaos. It's not just darkness. It is chaos without God. That is the one reason why we still exist as a church is to be that life and light 
bringers and glorifiers into this world. We exist. We have been sent. We've been commissioned. We've been called to bring Jesus to this world. And we have a little picture here of John. And we know this is not the this is not John that's writing this. Y'all know that. When we, we see some of these Bible names, uh, you know, uh, Joshua's one where you have a, several Joshua's in the in the Old Testament. And so you see different names. Don't be confused. John the Apostle is writing these words through the work of the Holy Spirit. He is referencing, pointing to John the Baptist. Okay? And you say, well, how do you know John the Baptist didn't write this? Because John the Baptist died, he was beheaded, he was martyred in the lifetime of Jesus before this, this was ever written. So, but we're looking at the witness. God sent John. Now, who was John? Uh, we've studied this before a little bit. You've studied it as well in your own. But you know that that is the cousin of Jesus, the older cousin of Jesus. About six months. If you look in the Gospel of Luke, you can start looking at when uh, Mary found out and how she went to see her cousin and found out that she was also with child, which seemed like impossible because she was old. And so it had all this, and he found out that John the Baptist was about six months older than Jesus. I was thinking about that myself. What a great witness. Do you have, do you have a cousin that's like a brother? I, I have a cousin that's like a brother. Uh, we're all about the same age. My oldest cousin, she's passing on to, I pray, to be with the Lord. Um, you know, I just know by her younger experience that she received Christ, but her life didn't end well, and it was sad. Um, but her and my cousin, a little younger than me, they both know me. They know I am not, I have no way could I claim to be God. You know, if I try to do that, you know, if some cults that exist and they have this leader that tries to brainwash everybody to follow them because there's some reincarnation of, of, of some religious leader. And so they try to, to sway them and they can do a lots of things, either relationally or with knowledge, to, to make you think there's somebody they're not. But there's always a witness. In the fifth chapter, John, you can see some of the, the different witnesses to who Jesus is. If you want to read that later for yourself in John chapter 5. One of the witnesses pointed out to, not just the Word, not just the Father, not just the Spirit, not just the uh, uh, um, uh, other witnesses of the works of Jesus, but listed about the witnesses of who Jesus is, is John, as we know him, John the Baptist. Not just because God instilled with the Spirit to call Jesus being the Son of God, but he knew him. He knew him in his growing up days. He knew him as a, in family gatherings. And he knew there was something different about Jesus. And so that's why in this passage about Jesus about the word and who we're going to see it in the 14th uh, uh, on, on December 20, 24th on about John 1 14 is I'm looking at Jesus being God in the flesh. John the Baptist is a witness to who Jesus the word is. And that's why it's put in here for you. Who are the witnesses to Jesus Christ? John is one. And so if you give witness to people outside in this world, how do you know that Jesus is the Son of God? That he really is what's said here? Because the Apostle John, who walked with Jesus as one of the disciples, gave reference because before he walked with Jesus, John walked with John the Baptist. So he was one of those early followers of John the Baptist. John the Apostle is writing about John the Baptist in here to make sure that those current, in his time, those current followers don't deny Jesus and say, we're still following John the Baptist, even though he's dead. John is doing a lot in this scripture right here to give witness to who Jesus is and to, to try to convince those that are still following a dead man to let them understand that the one that they claim to follow, John the Baptist, in their religious followings, they need to get in line and follow after Jesus 
who is the Son of God. He is a witness. And so John writes about it, and you can see in the, the other uh, Gospels more about John the Baptist. So three things that John the Baptist would witness to, along with John the Apostle, is who the Son of God, this Word is. And the Word, it says in verse 4, is he, the life, was in him. So that's not, that, that, that past tense word was can get you thinking, well, that means it's over or something like that. This was a continual thing from eternity to help you understand. The life was, always has been, is the idea, always has been in him. Jesus never knew the word, never knew a time when he was not life. It was from him that he created life through the will of the Father and in the working of the Word, the Son of God. So life was in him. So this Christmas season, this time of the year, when there are a lot of people that are saying, I just don't, I don't deal with Christmas. I don't like Christmas. It's a sad time of my life. And you say, okay, what happens in this sad times that you're dealing with? What happens on January the 14th? Is it, is it over? How, how do you get past that? Where does it finally go away? Is it just because you're getting to December 25th? What's making it hard? Is it because you're alone? You know, uh, is it because you're lonely? Is it because of loss? Is it because of grief? Is it something that's just happened? Or is this something that's every year if you go through this, this difficult time? Tell them Jesus came to bring you life. Jesus came. That's why I have no qualms in saying that we will focus in spotlight on the coming of God to earth at this time of the year that we celebrate Christmas. Again, I will say it, I'll keep saying it until we get it. It doesn't matter what day you wanna call it, we know that Jesus came. It was a long distance. We think about the long distance that Mary had to ride on the back of the donkey. One of the, one of the kids, they were all getting their little animal stuff on costumes and so we needed some that would be right underneath the manger and have some animal stuff on and so one of the kids was saying well what is this and we finally discovered it was a donkey and and he was looking at me I forgot who it was now he was looking at me and he was going well I, yeah but I really want to be that I said of all the animals you could dress up to be for this story the best is the donkey because it was on the donkey that Mary rode from Nazareth to Bethlehem. I said, what better animal to dress up and to be? Now, I don't know if that messes up our program tonight or anything else, but I just think about the stories. I think about, I think about, uh, you know, I just saw Christy, you know, carrying this baby and now she's sitting there with grandma and, and all that stuff. I just remember, you know, for the last nine months or so and we would just see the baby growing and we were talking to him and of course Christy's you know, singing to her and all that stuff. And I just think about, I wonder what Mary was saying to baby Jesus along that path. But I think about the song that we sang, we've heard sung to us, how far Jesus came. He stepped from eternity into the womb. That's just amazing work of the Holy Spirit. By the way, it was the Holy Spirit that overshadowed. So if you think some people will say, well, I'll, I'll go with the Father and the Son, but where is that Holy Spirit? They, they, they have a hard time understanding the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit's work where the uh, <coughs> baby was brought into humanity, Jesus. I just think about that. And I think about these stories here. And I think about life is in the hands and the person of the Word. So if you're in a, in a place where you're not, your life is just, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I think about two streets over, and I think about the, the men and women that are in that jail, just a couple streets over. And I'm thinking, you know, we, we, we sing our carols, we go down Main Street, we do all these things. But I think about, what about the, the, the people that are out there with facing some different things? That yes, they made decisions, and yes, we don't know all their stories, and, and some of you may know some of the stories of some of the ones that are in there. But regardless, they, they definitely are going to say, my life is bad, Brother Paul. My, my life is bad, church, because 
on Christmas Day, I'm going to be in there. And man, and they made me think, I, my life's over because I don't know how I can, what else can I do? And I would say to them that the creator, the creator of your life, your life right now, is the same creator that wants to create within you a new life. He wants to bring life. That's what it says here. He wants to bring life. It says here, and that life was the light of man, of humanity. And that light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness did not overcome it. You know, you go on to Facebook and you go on to these stories. And as a preacher, I get all these preacher stories given to me from other preachers. And you think those are all kind of cool and everything. But there's a lot of them on. One's of an Einstein, one about Einstein dealing with a professor talking about light and darkness and all this stuff. But the good thing is that we need to know is that Jesus Christ is the one that brings us life. Not just physical life, but he brings us spiritual life. And he brings us salvation to give us a new life, a new birthday, a new relationship to God and to one another. And it is that light that fills our heart through the working of the Holy Spirit upon the word of God that enables us to see clearly to where the light clicks on when we understand who we are, who he is and what he wants to do in our life, how he brings us forgiveness of sin. And that, yes, we're a sinner. And yes, everyone has made that bad decisions. We may not have ended up in a prison cell, but we still are in some kind of prison cell in our life's existence because of sin. But because of Jesus Christ coming into this world, we have the opportunity to ask him into that room. And please, don't think you've got to clear that song kind of is great, very emotional, but he'll come in and help you get the room cleaned out. He'll transform it. Some of you aren't very good house cleaners, and he is the master house cleaner. He knows how to clean it all out and get it ready for his work in every last square inch of your life. And he's going to transform it in such a way that you will never be ashamed to have company come over because he is in the room. And when he is in your room, he is filling it up with glory and no one's going to see all the other stuff about you. They're, he's going to, they're going to see Jesus in your life. And that's what we're praying for. Jesus came. Jesus came. To bring you life and to bring you the ability to see how to live this life. And that's what this year is about. This season is about. This month is about. That's what today is about. And so today, in just a minute, we're going to have a, I forgot what song we're singing. What are y'all doing? Have thine own way. You've heard make room in your heart. You're going to be hearing a, a sing have thine own way. And you may be saying, Brother Paul, I need Jesus in my life. Not to get you back to where you were, but to bring you to where he wants you to be. He loves you. The best thing you can do right now is walk out of here with Jesus in your heart. Do you know Jesus? Have you given him first place? Have you asked him to save you? Have you asked him to take over your life? If you haven't, today's the day. The lights are burning now to remind you that he is the king, that he is the one that is the light. He is the one that's the light, and he wants you to come and trust in him, to come into his presence. So will you come today? If you're in Christ, but you've forgotten, maybe you've cluttered the room, the relationship with Jesus. Maybe you want to come back and say, Lord, let me put all this stuff aside and be focused on you this, this year, this season, today. Let's go to the Lord for it. For the fathers, we come before you. We thank you for all that you've given us. Lord, there's a lot of things that's in our minds right now. We're thinking about honoring you tonight and, and singing and praising you and rejoicing with the boys and girls and, and, and Father, giving an offering to help support the work of the missionaries that you have sent Father, around the world. But Lord, 
Help us to deal with our room right now. Our relationship with you. And Lord, if there's someone that needs Jesus, I pray that you'll bring them to you. They've been hearing about you. They've, been, they've known about you. They've heard about you. But today, they need to make that decision, that commitment to give their life to Jesus. Draw them to you, Father. It's in Christ's name we pray. Have thine own way. Y'all come and stand and see and let Jesus have his way with you. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. instructions for tonight uh, so I hope you'll be here I don't know if we actually said but the kids in the program they need to be here at 4 30 I need my main character here at 4 they're at 4 okay main characters y'all know y'all probably just got to be rehearsing some more so 4 and then 4 30 for everybody else and then the program begins at 6 okay uh Trevor let's come speak to you for just a minute something's been kind of laid on my heart you know a lot of people aren't always in church until a certain time of the year, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, big holidays. Well, we get strangers that come in. They met, we're not strangers, they're just, they don't come on a steady basis. That being said, I've heard over and over and over again in my little lifetime at different places that this is my finally, I got my home now that I love everybody here that I get to be around and it be influenced to me. But one thing that I've learned that it's crazy to hear each individual person say, the preacher's talking to me. I got news for you. It's God, That's it's right. the spirit. Come on, it's, right. it's Come not on. the preacher because he right. don't know your situation. He don't know everything that's going on. And he studies before Sunday, way before Sunday. He don't 
call out and talk to each individual person of what's going on in their life. That being said, if you can tell that on Sunday morning when he's talking or he's preaching the Lord's message, obviously you can hear God talking to you. So open your heart and listen. There's more than just a Sunday morning. There's Wednesdays and everything else. Just He's working on you. So that being said, Brother Paul is not just calling you out. It's, it's God. He's talking to you. You got to open your mind and open your heart. Amen. Amen. Hey, so you heard me say that. You heard him say it. So if he's been saying it to you, that's two witnesses. <laughs> so don't put it off. I, I didn't ask him. He just said, can I say something? I had it's a little scary when somebody guys say something. You don't know what they're going to say. <laughs> Thank you. Especially Trevor. Especially Trevor. <laughs> All right. Well, so you all know what you're going to do. We'll have a great time tonight. It's a wonderful life. We will put this on, um, uh, yeah, it'll be on the YouTube and on Facebook Live. So if for some reason you can't be here, you can at least see that, uh, see the program. You'll miss all this stuff over here. It's a lot of fun. So let me... Uh, I'm, I'm driving the bus, and you know, you're the preacher and you're the bus driver, and one of the kids I picked up said, Brother Paul, I, I've got, I'm, I'm, uh, someone, someone, we, we made some uh, rings, and so, uh, I don't know what they're made of, I didn't get my glass on, I think they're rubber bands, so they said, Brother Paul, uh, I said, yeah, I lost that one, you know, well, we're selling it, I said, oh, and I need you to buy it for a dollar, I said, okay, okay, and I thought, oh, and then she said, well, we're trying to get enough money so we can go buy something in the auction. So I don't know if this counts in my Lottie Moon offering for buying this, <laughs> Sharon, but uh, a, a dollar actually gave me. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, maybe she'll get the Lottie Moon, that's right. So I, I did that. I, I'm not encouraging a lot of that going on, but uh, and she called it, so the reason I bought it Rusty's is because uh, she said it's a hunter's ring. I said, that's what I need. I need a hunter's ring. So uh, uh, anyway, thank you, kids, and so. Uh, let the, the kids are going to have stuff. So remember, you know, sometimes you'll see that there's some things for children as well. So I'm not telling adults not to buy them, but, you know, sometimes we need to let the kids have ownership in that too. And so let's, let's, that's why we're doing the smaller gifts as well. So God, God bless you. Have a great time uh, this afternoon. Rusty and Katie uh, and Rusty are going to help over at the nursing home at Latimer at 2. If some of y'all want to do that, you're welcome to join him. If some of you want to help me, I still got to clean up a little bit from um, the, the rest of the parade stuff out over here. So I'll probably be up here around three to get that out of the way, Sharon. And you can tell me at the church how many tables and all this stuff. All right, let's, let's all stand. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, thank, thanks again for Hey, Scott, thank you for making the sound work for us all the way down Main Street. They heard us... Uh, Different song. We heard the one for tonight, as well as a, a little chorus called King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Uh, would, you, would you close us in prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. And remind us that 